we're going to do a, a real quick video today that talks about an easy explosion animation in Unity in the 2D setting in under 10 minutes. So to quickly go through it, in order to start we're going to grab a spreadsheet that has individual sprite explosions to it and make it into one single explosion animation. From there we're going to tell it at the end of that first animation cycle we're going to destroy itself, turn that object into a prefab so that we can later instantiate it with another object. Let's say that we have a situation where we have a rocket and we want to hit this asteroid. When it hits the asteroid we want to instantiate an explosion and then at the end of the explosion the explosion object should destroy itself. Let's set up that scenario where uh, I have an asteroid right now. It doesn't have uh, it does have a collider on it and it's a regular collider, circle collider and we have a missile that has a move has a move um, script to it and it's just using the rigid body grabbing the rigid body, setting it to a reference variable and then telling it to add force right at start and so you'll notice that if we get into play right now all we see is that the rocket flies and collides with the asteroid and spins around. We can constrain stuff like that if we want to but at the moment it's doing what we want to but at the moment that it collides we want to spawn a or instantiate an explosion. So let's first set up the explosion. We're going to grab, go into a sprite sheet that we might have. Let's see where we have some sprites, demo sprites. I have this grouping of explosion sprites that I have here and if you're not familiar then we can grab a sprite sheet that has a transparent background turn the background of the sprite mode to multiple and then be able to edit or slice out the elements that we want that's going to later turn into our individual frames for the animation. Now that we have them all pulled out I can grab the first one if I want to turn that into an object I'll rename it into regular explosion scale that object to a size that I think fits the scenario That, that might be appropriate. Maybe it could be a little bit bigger. Let's make it a little bit bigger, yeah. There's the explosion object itself. We want to make it into an animation so I can go into the window and click on the animation having selected the game object. I'll create one clip and I'm going to add it to my animations folder and I'm going to call it explosion. Explosion. Or apparently I already have an explosion. Let's call it. Let's talk. Call it um, missile explosion. Great. From there I have my animation window, and I'm going to drag in all of these sprites. If I select all of them and I hover into the window box, into the timeline, it lets me know with the green plus icon that I'm adding multiple to it. I'm happy with that. I'll test it out by hitting play in the preview and I can see that the explosion is actually happening very quickly and I can lower that number this 60 means that it's playing 60 frames per second and that in this case is too fast we'll lessen it to 12 and maybe that's what I want so like the explosion is going to be relatively quick so that's great and what I want to do now is that at the end of this animation I want to be able to destroy the object the explosion object itself. And so in order to do that, a simple way to make this happen is to create a new script and we're basically going to add just one line to it. I don't want to call it script. That was really dumb. I'm going to remove that one. I don't want to call it just generically called script. I'm going to add a new script and I'm going to call it um, explode or destroy self. destroy now that I've created the script we're going to jump into Visual Studio
Come on, Visual Studio. Here's the script. We don't need to have anything in start or update. We basically just want to create a public function that returns nothing and, and we're going to call it destroy. It's going to take no parameters. Let's call it a different name. Public void, yeah, public void and um and destroy. And um Visual Studio is kind of going crazy right now, but we're just gonna ignore that. But the method that we want to do is have it destroy because this is a built-in Unity method. Don't autocorrect me. And we're gonna destroy ourselves, the lowercase g game object. Save that. You may not like it because uh, Visual Studio is being kind of weird. Go back into Unity. And what's going to happen here is that we need to make the link to this particular script and the method attached to it to call itself at the end of the animation. So how does it happen? We're going to go to the window. We're going to go to animation. Click on the animation window and make sure we select the explosion because that's what we're editing. And we're going to add an event. And this event allows us, we can drag this around to a particular point in the timeline but this allows us to call public methods that are attached to the same object. So remember, this explosion object has that destroy self script, and we made that method inside of it public. So when we click on this event, you'll notice in the inspector that there's a function option that exposes the anim end destroy method. And that means that when this timeline progresses all the way across here, it's going to call that public method as it gets to that point. So we can test this by hitting play and we expect that this explosion object to destroy itself at the end. Boom, it's gone. All right? Cool. So at this point we have completed those steps of one, two, three. Now we want to make this explosion object a prefab. We're happy with that. I'm just going to drag this object into my prefabs folder. It can be anywhere, but I've already created a prefabs folder. And you'll notice that it turns blue to let us know that's a prefab. And if I make any future changes to it, I'll need to make sure that I apply it to all future instances of that prefab. Great, so I think that was less than 10 minutes.